National correspondent Manu Raju was in the room there for Romney's press conference. Manu, outside of Romney's inner circle, the senator's announcement today came as a, a real surprise. Yeah, no question about it, because there was a hope that he would actually run for re-election. In fact, in a lobbying campaign among some top Republicans urging him to do so. Senate Republican leader Mitch McConnell will hope that, Mitch, that Mitt Romney would run, not necessarily because the seat would flip, but because he represents a voice, an influential voice within the Republican Party, a more establishment voice, a Trump, an anti-Trump voice, one that is waning in the Republican Party. It, even though he was the party's presidential nominee, in 2012, much has changed since then. Something that he flatly acknowledged in his press conference just moments ago. We had a chance to talk to him on a wide range of subjects about his decision to step aside. He said that it's simply an issue about his age. By the time he were to, if he were to run and win re-election, he would be in his 80s. He said that is there's people should not be in office in his 80s. He said repeatedly. He said it's time for a new generation of leaders. He sharply criticized Donald Trump. He criticized Biden as well. He did believe he could win re-election, but he said it would be difficult in acknowledging the politics within his party. Now, he also made clear time and again that his wing of the party is essentially in a middle uh, a battle with the Trump wing of the party. He argued that his wing is focused on policy, is focused on some of the key issues that are central to the Republican Party platform, not about a personality, which is the Trump wing of the party. That is what, something that he says he will continue to focus on, Jake, in the months and weeks ahead, and ahead particularly after he leaves office, making clear here. And Jake, just take a listen to what he had to say moments ago. Have a say in uh, in how we uh, we leave the earth and how they prepare for the the future they're going to live in. <laughs> so uh, you guys have uh, already seen the statement that I put out. I don't know that I want to repeat that. Uh, but if you have any questions, I just I mean populism doesn't work. I, I quote that M. L. Mencken line, which is to every complex problem, there's a solution which is simple, clear, and wrong. And unfortunately, that's what we're hearing. And again, on the, on the Trump wing of the party, I haven't heard policy other than saying we're going to build a wall. And by the way, he was president. He was president for four years. He built 50 miles. Wh what did he get done? We said, well, how about the tax change? Well, the tax, that was Paul Ryan. That, that wasn't the Biden plan. He did, of course, he have a, had a health care plan. Remember that? That was going to, everybody's going to have low cost health insurance that was fabulous. Never proposed, never saw. He was in four years. So it's not a policy-centric approach. And, and Jake, I asked him if he was misreading the party, given the fact that Donald Trump is on the, his path to winning the Republican nomination, at least at the moment, looks like that he could certainly be the Republican nominee and Romney being an outlier of sorts. He said, I'm not looking at changing the party within the next two years. He said, over the next decade, Jake. Yeah, he, he acknowledged he was an outlier when you put that question uh, to him. Uh, Manu, th there was speculation that Romney could have been facing a tough re-election fight. Uh, Donald Trump certainly uh, would have him in his target, uh, would, would want to recruit somebody to defeat him, would have put some energy into that. Um, do you think that played a factor into this? It would have been a tough fight, no question about it. Romney was asked about that at this press conference. He said that he's seen polls that made him feel better about his standing back home, but he said he flatly realizes that a number of people simply disagreed with his position as his handling of Donald Trump. He said he had hoped that people within his party believed that he was standing on principle and they would reward him for that, but fully knowing full well that this would have been a battle to win re-election here, uh, he suggested that perhaps that that was not the reason why he wanted to step aside. He simply continued to point to his age as being the main factor here. But no question, Jake, even though the safe seat is a safe Republican seat, and even though Republican voters in Utah are not as pro-Trump as some other red states in the union, it would have been a fight for him to win re-election, something they simply did not want to do at this stage of his life. All right, Manu Raju on Capitol Hill, thanks so much. Our panel's here to discuss. Uh, Charlie uh, Dent, a former Republican congressman from Pennsylvania, is uh, Senator Romney like the last Republican statesman in the Senate, do you think? Well, I don't think he's the last one, but he certainly is an elder statesman in a party where, where we don't really like to listen to elder statesmen too much anymore. Uh, so, but no, Mitt Romney, I think, is right in his analysis. There's no shame in retiring at the age of 80 or 77. It's okay. And I think that Mitt, you know, he's, he's dedicated his life, uh, much of his life to public service, and uh, he's been an adult. He's been talking about policy, the future, and, and frankly, in a party that uh, 
really wants to focus on Donald Trump and his grievances in the past. And so I think it's a big loss for the party, and we're going to need voices to replace him. You've, uh, you've spent a lot of time with him. You've mm -hmm. done documentaries uh, about uh, Mitt Romney and Ann Romney. Um, what do you think uh, the country loses with him retiring from politics? We still get him for a, a little bit more time, but like he, he is stepping, he's stepping aside. An, an honest uh, politician. I think that what you heard today in that press conference was somebody who was uh, telling the truth as he saw it, and he, he wasn't sugarcoating anything. He wasn't sugarcoating how he felt about Donald Trump. Uh, he wasn't sugarcoating about how he felt about uh, House Republicans or the whole notion of an impeachment inquiry. He was saying that he hadn't seen any hard evidence. And so, you know, he stands out in many ways, obviously, as a Republican who voted twice for impeachment, but also as somebody who uh, went on the Senate floor and said that he had to stick with his ethics and his moral values, and that's why he had to vote for, for impeachment. So it's a, it's, you know, it's a rarity these days that you don't get canned answers from people. And I think today was what you saw is who Mitt Romney really is. Alencia, as the Democrat at the table, I'm sure you disagree with Mitt Romney, a very conservative Republican on most issues. Uh, is there any part of you that feels bad that he's leaving or, or is it just good riddance? Well, I'm kind of in the middle in that if there's going to be a Republican in the Senate, I would appreciate it in being a Mitt Romney who will stand up to a Donald Trump, right, who actually voted to impeach him, right? That is really important that he is taking, you know, he's looking at our politics and what they are regardless of the party affiliation and talking about that. But, you know, the reality is, as a Democrat, I see it as an opportunity for us to hopefully run someone that could potentially win in Utah. I mean, it's an uphill battle. Yeah. It is an uphill battle. Yeah. I'm giving her a lot of side but, eye. Yeah. I don't, Greg, Greg is not catching it, but Alencia is laughing because I, I am a, laughing. there's a lot of side eye being given over here. It's Utah. That's a it pretty conservative place. And I, and I hope, More though, conservative I mean, I think the one thing we do hope is that the whoever wins the seat is not any more extreme than Mitt Romney, that they um, would maybe toe the line that he does. Okay, good luck with that. So Romney is the <laughs> only Republican member of Congress to vote twice to impeach Donald mm -hmm. Trump, as we noted. Um, Romney sat down with McKay Com uh, Coppins. This is interesting. They, uh, he is cooperating uh, with a biography of him by McKay, uh, who's a great writer um, if for The Atlantic. And an exception, in an excerpt from that biography published today in The Atlantic, the senator tells Coppins a few months after the insurrection, quote, a very large portion of my party, he told me one day, really doesn't believe in the Constitution. Later, he goes on to talk about democracy, telling Coppins, quote, this is a very fragile thing, he told me. Authoritarianism is like a gargoyle lurking over the cathedral, ready to pounce. For the first time in his life, he wasn't sure if the cathedral would hold. In the party that, that is uh, really susceptible to these authoritarian impulses. I think that's true. I like to think that's not most of the party, but there are some, uh, you know, who will listen to Donald Trump when he talks about suspending the Constitution. They think, hey, at a boy. No, I mean, there, there are people who will go down that road. I think, I don't think it's a majority, but it comes back to leadership. We need people standing up and talking about democratic values, democratic with small d, democratic values, uh, and, and leading the base rather than they're being led by Donald Trump with no other narrative out there. And Trump is making all these crazy autocratic type statements uh, that people will follow. And by the way, just for yeah. the record, you were one of the first Republicans in Congress I remember standing up to Donald Trump. Just, oh yeah, just so, I, I just have so, the welts. Just so, just, <laughs> just, just, so, just so people, I remember doing a, 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 an interview with you for a documentary we were doing yeah. and I remember thinking, oh my God, he's gonna, he's gonna get he's clobbered. Gonna get punished, right? oh, and yeah. Speaking of which, Donald Trump reacted to the news on Truth Social in, in, in oh. his uh, typical classy fashion. He wrote, fantastic news for America, the great state of Utah and for the Republican Party, Mitt Romney, sometimes referred to as Pierre Delecto. That's actually, that's a, that's actually funny. That was Mitt Romney's uh, <laughs> burner <laughs> Twitter account. That's, yeah. a, that's a good shot, that's a clean shot. Yeah. Pierre Delecto will not be seeking a second term in the US Senate, where he did not serve with distinction. A big primary fight against him was in the offing, but now that will not be necessary. Congrats to all. Make America great again. How gracious. Yeah. I mean, come on. So it's, look, he's an enemy of, of Mitt Romney's because Mitt Romney voted twice to impeach him. And as Romney said today, you know, there are some people who are all about grievances and who are all about retribution. There and that's is. exhibit A. Yeah. One of the other things that's interesting here, and it's not a subtext, it's a text, is Mitt Romney saying, if I ran for re-election and won, I would be in my mid-80s uh, at the end of my term, and saying, 
basically, he said clearly that both Biden and Trump should step aside for a new generation, but also basically, you know, we shouldn't have people in their 80s in the Senate. You know, that's been a topic of conversation for a very long time, and not just when it comes to the people running for president, right? Some of the senators, their ages are being discussed as well. And look, I, I tend to, uh, I, I appreciate what he said. I appreciate that he is addressing it on the nose. But I, I also will say, look, I, y'all know I support President Biden, and he's very sharp. And he has proven time and time again that, you know, while people have concerns about his age, he is very smart and been able to do a lot of things historically that other presidents haven't been able to. So I'm pretty biased here. Thank you, one and all. <laughs> Appreciate it.